Okay, hello, hi, my name is Erin of Juniper and Oaks, and today I am going to teach you how to crochet. It's a simple corner to corner bookmark, and if we just look at it, we can see that we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rows, and then we have uh, three columns here. And so, what that means is if you know anything about corner to corner, is we're going to work up one, two, three rows, and then we start decreasing uh, on one side to make this rectangle. And on the other side, we're going to keep on increasing until we get to our 10 rows. So I jumped ahead of myself a little bit. So intro to corner to corner is we start crocheting in one corner, and then we work diagonally uh, back and forth for our rows. So we work diagonally. Uh, for our first pixel, our f that's what I call these little squares. This is a corner to corner square or pixel or tile. I'll use all of those interchangeably. But row one has one of those tiles, and then row two has two tiles, row three has three tiles. And then because we're decreasing after row three, um, all the rows up to row 10 are going to have uh, three tiles, and then we're going to start decreasing in order to finish off our rectangle. Each tile is essentially a chain three with three double crochets. When we do our increasing rows, we chain six and then work three double crochets uh, starting in the fourth chain from the hook. Uh, when we're not increasing, we're working just the middle little tiles. We do chain three and then work three double crochets into the space. Uh, and then when we're decreasing, I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Um, so that was just like a quick rundown of corner to corner. If you've never done it before, I think that this is a great project to learn how to do corner to corner because right away we do increasing and decreasing uh, right away in this pattern. And it's a small little bookmark and it really, really will just uh, let you know how to do corner to corner without doing a big old blanket and messing up. <laughs> Uh, on a big blanket and having to frog back a whole bunch of rows and tiles. Uh, instead, we just have this simple little bookmark. At the end, we work a single crochet border around and then add this cute little fringe to the bottom. Okay, I hope I didn't confuse you too much. If I did, just hold on tight because I'm going to teach you how to make this right now. What you need to what you need to work up this bookmark is I use scraps of some TK weight yarn that I had. Um, this is from a baby blanket yarn. Um, but for the sample I'm going to work up for you right now, I'm going to be using some DK weight yarn. And um, this is hand dyed yarn from High Desert Yarn. She's a friend of mine. Joanna is a dear friend that I uh, haven't met in real life yet, but we are internet crochet besties. She sent me these mini skeins of some of her uh, favorite colorways. She hand dyes her yarn in Idaho and she's just so fabulous. So this colorway is called Rainbow DK Weight and um, these little mini skeins are so cute. They're 20 grams and it's 100% merino wool yarn. Um, I feel so silly <laughs> working up just a bookmark in this beautiful hand dyed uh, beautiful wool yarn, but I just want to start using more hand dyed fancy yarns. I feel like knitters use a lot of fancy yarn and crocheters just don't, <laughs> but I want to get rid of that narrative. So um, thank you, Joanna. I bought this yarn with my own monies uh, and I have included affiliate link down below to our Etsy shop where you can get these mini skeins. This bookmark pattern is a bonus um, for my 2023 bookmark cal that I'm running. I want to read 12 books, one book each month. Um, and this month in January, I think I'm going to read, going to get through two books. If not get through them, at least start because I have read Memoirs of Imaginary Friend. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, and then now I'm going to be starting on This Tender Land by William Kent Kruger. I received this book in the Jen Hatmaker Book Club 
and this has been sitting, uh, I think, for like two, three, four, I don't know how many years, and I'm ready to start this. My father-in-law saw this sitting around uh, when he came to visit one time and just read it straight through, and my mother-in-law then borrowed it and read that <laughs> straight through, said it's a good book that I should read, so I'm going to start this. Uh, when I got the yarn from uh, from Joanna, I really thought, <laughs> first I was like, okay, I'm going to work this corner to corner up in this beautiful lupine. Then when I got the book out, <laughs> like, uh, no, scratch that. I think this looks really, uh, you know, the book is a little bit darker than these. But I think the colors just really match the cover so well. So I'm going to switch and we're going to be doing rainbow. Um, so here we go. We're going to be working up the simple corner to corner bookmark pattern using this beautiful rainbow yarn from High Desert Yarn. Let's do it. In order to keep my yarn from rolling, I'm going to put this in this cute little yarn bowl. I don't use this very much, but I uh, got this cute wooden frills crochet. Frills for our arts. So to start out the pattern, you're going to start with a slip knot and insert your hook. I just realized now I didn't talk about the hook that I'm using. I'm using a 3.5 millimeter hook, which is a, a size 4E. This hook is just a simple grippy hook from uh, We Crochet and Knit Picks. Okay, so I made our slip knot. And then to start out, we're chain six. Two, three, four, five, six. There are several different ways to do corner to corner, but the method that I'm teaching right now is the standard version uh, that I've seen uh, in, in that you start out with a chain of six. So after your chain six, you're gonna work a double crochet in the fourth chain from your hook. So one, two, three, four. a double crochet and then in the last two chains each one gets a double crochet as well in the last chain a double crochet you're using us terms here so you see that this is the first little pixel and it has we did the chain six and then three double crochets. Essentially, what you have is a chain three and three double crochets. And that is row one. So row one has one pixel or one tile, one square, whatever you want to call it. And now we're ready to work up row two. So row two, we increase and we're going to do a chain six again. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then in the fourth chain from your hook, you're going to do a double crochet. Okay, so we've essentially just did what we did for our, our first pixel. Um, and now you see this first pixel is kind of dangling there. What I'm going to do is flip it up so that your chain space is up here and you're going to work a slip stitch in that chain three space that chain space work a slip stitch to kind of join those together and now you're going to work up your second pixel of row two so your first row we increased we did a chain six but now the ones in the middle we just do a chain three and then you work three double crochets in that same chain three space where you just worked your slip stitch. Okay, so that is your second pixel in row two. You're done with row two now. And see, we're working diagonal. This is your first pixel that you made. 
and then here's the first one of row two and the second one. So now we're ready for row three. Beginning of row three, we chain three. Nope, sorry. Scratch that. At the beginning of row three, you chain six. Three, four, five, six. And then you work a double crochet in the fourth chain from your hook. And then in those last two chains, each one gets a double crochet. So we started this round just like we started row one and row two. And now our work is kind of dangling there. We're going to flip that up this way. So now this chain three space from our last pixel of row two, chain three spaces up and we're going to work a slip stitch in that chain three space. Now we're going to chain three, insert our hook in that chain three space and work three double crochets. Okay, each of these metal pixels gets a chain three and three double crochets. And in this chain three space, we work a slip stitch. And then we work this just like we did for our second pixel here. We chain three. And then three double crochets in that chain three space. So that is our last stitch of row three. This is where we're going to start decreasing. So at the beginning of each row here, we've been doing increasing where we chain six and work our pixels. Instead of doing that, I'm going to flip my work and we're not going to chain six, but what I need to do is decrease and I'm not going to be adding more. I'm just going to want to be working on top of this chain three space here. In order to do that, I am going to, in every stitch here, I'm going to work a slip stitch just to kind of hide my yarn. It's going to be four slip stitches. And then in this chain space, I'm going to work my final fourth slip stitch. And now I'm here in that chain three space. So that's how you do the decrease. And then now in each of these pixels, I'm going to do a chain three and then three double crochets in that chain three space. So I hope that made sense. At the end, um, the start of round four, we did our decrease where we worked slip stitch in each one, two, three, four until we got to that chain three space. And then we start our pixel where we chain three and three double crochets. Now we're going to slip stitch to that chain three space and work up our pixels like normal where we chain three and three double crochets in that chain three space. So each of these rows now is going to have three pixels. So for our third one, we slip stitch here. And work our pixel with our chain three and three double crochets. And that's the end of row four. Now we still need to get taller to make our bookmark. In order to get taller, we need to increase. So for round five is an increase row. We chain six. And then in the fourth chain from hook, we do a double crochet. And then a double crochet in those next two chains. Okay. 
Okay, now flip up your work and slip stitch to this chain three space. No work of a tile as normal. Chain three and then three double crochets in that chain three space. Then slip stitch to that chain three space, chain three, and three double crochets. And we're going to slip stitch to that chain three space. Now, see we've reached the end. We've worked up three pixels for round five and now we're ready for round six we're not going to keep going where we're chaining we need to decrease for round six so turn your work and then we're going to work our four slip stitches one two three four okay so in this first one we work a slip stitch the second one a slip stitch Third one, a slip stitch. And then we have our chain three space and work a slip stitch. So that's how we decrease to start round six, row six. And then we do our chain three. And work three double crochets in that chain three space. slip stitch now maybe you feel like you're getting the hang of it right you chain three and do three double crochets and then slip stitch oh I'm tearing apart that pixel right there all right you do a slip stitch to your chain three space chain three Three double crochets. Okay, that's the end of round six. We're ready for round seven. I keep on saying round, but what I mean is rows. Okay, at the beginning, uh, so to start your odd rows, you're going to increase. <laughs> to start your even rows, you're going to decrease. So for row seven, we increase, we chain six, right? Because we want to keep on getting taller over here. Two, three, four, five, six. And then we do our double crochet in the fourth chain from our hook. And flip the work, work a pixel. Slip stitch to end row seven, and now we're ready for row eight. Okay, don't get confused and start working on top of here. Um, we just want to make sure we have one, two, three pixels in row seven. Don't add a fourth one where you start making wonky shapes here. Now we're going to decrease. So flip your work. And in each of those stitches, work a slip stitch in order to get back to where we want to get. Okay, so to start row six, we did our decrease, or row eight, excuse me, did our decrease. Now we're chain three. Work three double crochets. And that chain three space. Okay, 
and slip stitch. And three double crochets. Chain three, three double crochets to finish up row eight. So now we're ready for row nine, which is an increase row. So we do chain six. And we do three double crochets. each of those chains, one double crochet in each of the chain, flip the work up. And we're working three pixels, just like we have been doing for row nine. I wasn't sure how this uh, variegated rainbow yarn was going to work with corner to corner, but I think it looks all right. What do you think? Okay, we've done our three stitches, one, two, three, our three pixels, and now we are ready to not add on here. Remember at the end of our uh, odd rows or at the beginning of our even rows, we do our decrease. We're ready for row 10, so we flip our work, we decrease. We work our slip stitches up the side, one, two, three, four slip stitches up the side. So we're ready for row uh, 10, the first pixel, chain three. And do our three double crochets. Slip stitch here, work three double crochets, I mean, three chains, three double crochets. And then one last one where we're going to slip stitch, chain three. And three double crochets. Okay, that is the end of row 10. Excuse me. That is the end of row 10. We know that because if we count up the side, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 pixels. And we don't want to go any taller. So usually to start our next row, row 11, um, I always said, I have been saying, for odd rows, you chain six, you do an increase, but now we are done increasing. We're ready to decrease um, and kind of finish off our rectangle here. So flip your work, and just like we had been doing, you work your uh, decrease. Four slip stitches across the top, and then we're ready to just work our chain three and three double crochets. I hope that makes sense how I did that decrease. You know, this row is only going to have two pixels because we have a decrease on both sides. Slip stitch and now we just have one pixel left but in order to do that we need to flip our work and decrease up the side here work our four slip stitches then chain three work our last pixel with three double crochets Just like that. But you need to slip stitch here to join. And there you have it. There's the body of our work.
kind of like how that striped itself right there. Okay, uh, the way corner to corner works is I always think it needs a border because um, the pixels don't always line up along the edges. So for our border, I'm going to chain one and then just kind of evenly about two uh, single crochets per pixel or so. Just evenly work single crochets around. In your corners, you know, you can work three double crochets. Then about two or three single crochets per pixel just all the way around each corner working three double or three single crochets for each corner just adding a single crochet border around to kind of even out those edges straighten them out make it look a little nicer When I'm making corner to corner squares, like for an afghan, um, this is how I work around my corner to corner squares so I can easily join them together for uh, an afghan. Ready for my corner. Work three single crochets in my corner. And then continue just working around. Okay, when you get back to the start, just do a slip stitch to join. You can do an invisible join if that's what you prefer. And then just fasten off. And then you'll weave in your end. Here you, you know, if you just want to leave it very simple, you can just end it there, or you can add your little fringe right here. Uh, to add the fringe, you can either wind some yarn around some cardboard or around a little fringe maker. Uh, instead, I'm just going to wrap it around my four fingers here. Again, one, two, three, four, five. Um, I did five little sets of fringe and each one has three strands of yarn. So you want to wrap it around your hand, what, 15 times? Five times three is 15. Two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And then cut down at the bottom. I'm going to cut. This doesn't want to cut through a lot of yarn. Okay. Then separate your yarn into strands of three. I'm going to do it down here. Sorry. In your corner, insert your hook. Grab your yarn and pull it through and kind of pull it through the yarn. You might want to get a, a bigger hook size. Make sure that your fringe is a bit even. I kind of didn't have mine super even right here. Pull that out and start again. Can always clean up the yarn if it's uneven. 
later on. Seems like I have a lot of blue, so I'm gonna do like one different color mixed in with the blue. You can count depending on how many stitches you did to even it out. So if I did one, two, three, four. So about every other. You insert. Do, do, do. Try to make sure your ends are even. Add some fringe. There you have it, folks. If you want to, you can block this. I probably will end up blocking in order to really even out my edges. And then you can snip your ends here in order to make your fringe a bit more even. Here we go. And there you have it. You have your simple corner to corner bookmark. Here you have it in your solid color and in this variegated hand dyed yarn from High Desert Yarn. Okay, get your hands on this hand dyed yarn here using the affiliate link down below. You can get your hands on the written instructions for this bookmark found on my website, jennopernoaks.com, also linked down below. And you can learn more about this really fun crochet along that I have going on all year in 2023. Doesn't that bookmark look so good with this book? I can't wait to get started with this Tenderline by William Ken Kruger. I have included uh, a link, affiliate link to Amazon down below if you wanna get your hands on this also included a link to Scribd, which I use to listen to my audiobooks if you're more of an audiobook person. Please like this video and comment below with a book that you are reading or one you recommend that I read in 2023. I would love it if you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell so you're notified anytime I release any new yarn related content. I have pattern walkthroughs, stitch tutorials, and other yarn related content such as uh, question and answerings with other crochet pattern designers, podcasts of different events that I have going on, things like that. So definitely subscribe and hit that bell. Okay, until the next time, you guys, talk to you later. Bye-bye.